Hi, welcome to Nasha's Art. Today I'm going to show you how to make a collage based on Henry Rousseau's jungle paintings. The French artist Henry Rousseau was totally self-taught and only started painting at the age of 40. He loved painting jungles and exotic animals and particularly enjoyed painting ferocious tigers attacking their prey. His first ever jungle painting was surprised. Also known as Tiger in a Tropical Storm, this painting got mixed reviews when Rosso exhibited it in 1891. Let's have a go at drawing that tiger. We're going to start with his ear. Curved line up and round. And then from the top, curve down and come back up. From the sort of middle of the ear, we're going to do the forehead. Gently curve down and round. From the tip, you're going to come down and in, so we have a nose. We're now going to do the top of the jaw. Curve down and in just a little bit. Now the bottom jaw. Go back to this point and come out and this time do a jagged line because they're quite furry tigers on their jaw. And you're going to come out and do a furry line for that big fluffy bit of cheek. Let's get the eye in. Come to the nose. Don't draw, just come up below this little bump on the forehead. And we're going to do a sort of almond shape. And you're going to also come in just like that and bring it down. Okay. We're now going to do a long neck, shoulders and along the back. From the top of the ear, move down so that you're not in the middle, but just a bit up. And we're going to do a sort of gentle sloping line upwards. And a lump here for the shoulder because he's straining his head forward. There's the shoulder, round, and then sloping downwards along the back. Do a little gentle lump there for hips, and another one here, and let's stop there. Let's go back to the fluffy bit on the jaw, and fluff, fluff it up a bit more. Not so it meets the ear, but just underneath. We're now going to do underneath his neck and chest. So let's make this bit fluffy and then a curved line in. We'll stop there. Meeting that, we're going to come down to do his front leg. Muscles need to be drawn over the body. So I'm going to come up Here's the neck we just drew. I'm going to come in and draw a line down and carry that line on for the front of that leg. Now we're going to do some large paws. Curve, do another curve and come back. Try and get it a little bit flat and then we're going to curve up and then onto the muscle that's in the body. So let's curve up. Notice it's getting slightly fatter as we go. Elbow and muscle on the body. We have a front paw and arm that's curving round. So we're going to get that next. 
go to the middle of the chest and you're going to come sloping down and we're going to curve round because we can see a little bit of the fur of the front of the paw curving round I'm going to do a little bit of a curve in then another little lump with a curve in and the final little lump with a curve in. Now we're now going to draw the palm of the tiger's hand, which we can see because he curves his paw in when he walks. So you want to draw a shape a bit like that. Another shape like that, a larger circle here above it. And we're going to curve round and up to there. The other side of the arm comes out from here. Let's draw his tummy. Now first, it comes out from the elbow of this arm. and We're gonna curve up and then slightly down for a tummy and go straight down into this back leg. So from this elbow, I'm going to curve up, round a little bit for the tummy and curving in, out for the back leg. And now we're going to come down towards the paw. Down and here we're going to begin the paw. One lump over, another lump. Make it slightly flat and then come up. We're going to come all the way up to the ankle now and it's going to stick out and come towards his rear. Out, so it's up and out. And now we're going to do a swooping curve in and stop before we meet this line. So swooping curve in and stop there because we're now going to fill in the tail. And there's a little gap between the hind of the the hind leg and the tail. So I'm going to do that gap first. I'm going to go back to this line and curve down. The tail is behind the leg. Let's fill the other side of the tail in. And now we can do that little bit of extra tail that's sticking out behind this leg. We can pretend like we're following it through. Curve, get fatter at the end and in again. Lastly, we've got this leg that's on the other side and a bit of muscle that we need to do over the body. So I'm going to do the muscle first by coming almost as if I'm carrying this line on. I'm going to get that muscle in. Let's do the back leg now. The back leg needs to come out a little above the middle of the thigh here. So it's going to start coming out towards the ankle. There's the ankle. Now we want to curve down towards the paw. There's the beginning bit that's resting on the floor. And we're going to make the paw now. And now the front bit of the leg, which will end up coming towards this bit of the tummy. Front bit of the leg. And getting slightly wide as it goes up towards the tummy. Add some colour to your tiger by building up layers of either colour pencil or watercolour. Mix in yellow ochre, oranges, light browns, and even dark browns in patches. Build up the layers, making sure that the underbelly of the tiger is lighter than the top part of his body. When you come to doing the stripes, 
Each individual stripe needs to be done in a specific way. Take a look at an actual tiger picture, if you can. And where the stripes go off the edge of the body, curve them slightly to show the roundness and the 3D-ness of the body. Notice that the stripes on the underbelly are more fluffy and slightly lighter, as well as the stripes on the insides of the legs. The next stage is to use some sketching pencils and have a study of house plants. I have a 2B, a 6B and an HB. Anything around these kinds of pencils would be perfect. I'm going to start off with my HB, a nice middle pencil, not too hard and not too soft. And I've collected some leaves, it might be a great idea for you to do the same. Go outside in the garden perhaps, or if you have some house plants around, gather them together and study some leaves. I'm going to have a go at this really interesting looking wrinkled leaf. I might even do it a lot bigger. That's something that Mr. Rousseau did. He would take normal house plants and he would draw them much larger. He'd never been to a rainforest or seen real plants in their natural habitat. He would go to botanical gardens, he would look in his daughter's animal and plant books, children's books, and he would copy those drawings. And so we're kind of using a bit of his technique in that we're using house plants and, and plants that are around and we're just going to draw them a lot bigger because that's how he imagined tropical rainforest plants to be, just like normal plants, but enormous. Often we turn our nose up at wrinkled leaves, but actually they can be really interesting to draw. So I've done the outline with my HB. I'm now going to take my 6B and really work in some of this shading. Especially the shadowy areas that are hidden underneath and where the light can't really get to them. Henry Rosso used to spend hours and hours at the museums around where he lived, looking at stuffed animals and looking at samples of dried flowers and leaves at the botanical gardens. And he would use those to help him understand more about the plants and animals that he drew. But of course, sometimes because those animals or plants were dried or stuffed, their shape had changed slightly in the process. So not all his drawings are completely accurate. I'm changing pencil here. I've got the 2B now because this area is a little bit lighter. At the moment, I'm just studying the light and dark shades just to warm my brain up and get myself going. I'm going to press lighter now because this part is receiving more light just in there. Later on, we're going to use some of these drawings along with cut up bits of magazines to create our collage. 
So in a way, your sketches of garden plants and house plants, they don't need to be perfect, but it's a way of exploring and understanding Monsieur Rousseau's process when he created art. This would have been his process to use many, many studies of drawings before he went and worked on his huge canvases and worked in paint. When you have the light and dark areas, you want to work very lightly next to the dark area so that the light area can pop out and really really stand out next to the dark areas. You can get quite a lot of variation just with a 2B pencil. So this is quite a good, good little test to see how many different shades you can get just with the one pencil. You can work a bit darker, middle tones, lighter tones just with that one 2B pencil. One critic actually said of Mr. Rosso's paintings that he believed Mr. Rosso paints with his feet and with his eyes closed. So people were really quite rude about his artwork, which was a bit sad. Of course, no one's rude about his artwork now, and many of his artworks and paintings hang in very famous art galleries all around the world. But at the time, the people who were famous and well-known and respected for their art, a lot of them didn't like Mr. Rosso, Mr. Rosso's artwork. They thought it was childish. They thought it was done by someone who hadn't had proper training and didn't know how to draw properly. Of course now we love his artwork and we appreciate it for the skill it had. The painting surprise, is, if you count the numbers of greens that you can see in the painting surprised, well you'll be surprised. It's, you could probably count about 27 different shades of green and that takes a lot of skill. So at the time people were perhaps underestimating Mr. Rosso a little bit. But now of course we understand differently. What you want to do is spend a while researching, drawing and understanding some of these leaves that you've picked from the garden hopefully or you've used your house plants for and as you do that try and make your book drawings bigger and bigger and bigger and explore ways of showing the shadows and the veins on the leaves once you've got quite a few drawings and fill up one page with them you don't have to do lots of different sheets of paper for your drawings. You can just use one sheet of paper and fill it all up. Because later on we'll cut it up different ways and use your drawings for the collage. I'm now going to show you how to explore the patterns, leaves and colours in a forest using either felt tip brush pens or even normal felt tips and watercolours. I guess you can use whatever you have to hand and whatever whatever's available to you. The reason that we're doing this is not necessarily because it's part of Mr. Rosso's process, but more because when you're making a collage with cut out pieces of magazines, newspapers, etc., it's really effective to have parts of that collage with your own touch added to it, your own kind of bits of artwork. 
And so these explorations will not only allow us to enjoy and explore forest patterns, but also we can then cut them up later and add them to the artwork to add more interest to our collage. So I'm going to do a little bit of this with the felt tips and then also do a little bit with watercolours. You want to kind of think about the different shapes and textures of the leaves that you find in a rainforest. You've got fern-like leaves with small little fronds. You've got wide leaves, long leaves, leaves with big veins. And you kind of want to just enjoy that variety of pattern and texture. On this one here, you can see that I've also added um, some drawings. So I've mixed pencil drawings in with the um, felt tips and that looks quite interesting as well. It captures your eye, makes you quite intrigued. What is it? Is it an eye? Is it leaves, dead leaves? Is it branches, bits of wood, the eye of a, inside the bark of a tree? And again, that's all part of capturing the interest of whoever's looking at the artwork. With the watercolours, make yourself as many or a few, quite a few interesting greens as you can. Fill some brushes up with them and just again, explore and experiment what you can do with the brush. That's leaf-like and forest-like. You can use the house plants or collected leaves that you've got, plus a bit of imagination. Uh, that is very much what Mr. Rosso did. Uh, Monsieur, as we know, he never visited a forest, even though he did claim that he visited forests when he was in the army. But actually he didn't. It was, I think, him just making up a story that added interest to his art and helped to give it credibility. So go through with your different size brushes, exploring, enjoying all the different greens. See what you can do with them. Using darker greens to draw your leaf shapes and patterns and lighter greens, yellows, oranges and yellow ochres to fill in parts of the leaf. Remember that one side of a leaf usually reflects the light and another side of it, the other half, is a little bit darker. So you could use a lighter yellow, for example, and a darker yellow. You also want to try and build up layers. So think about drawing the leaves behind and then on top of them, creating more layers of leaves on top. You might think about having a lighter colour underneath and then the darker colour of a fern or branch on top. I've cut out my tiger drawing and I'm going to gather all my bits and pieces together. My background leaf drawings, my sort of pencil drawings and then lots of leaflets that have interesting colours including green but also others that can be cut up and used to collage. You'll also need a background piece of paper, either black white or you could do a watercolour wash over it to give it a sort of green background. 
what I've started to do is cut out shapes from the various leaflets and menus that I've got through the post. This one happened to have quite a sort of wooden look so that I've ended up creating the trees out of and I'm going to continue doing that constantly referring back to leaf shapes that I have to make sure that I've got a variety of different shapes and sizes of leaves and I'm also going to cut out the leaf drawings I did as well sometimes it might even be part of them not the whole leaf so for example here I might cut out just part of it and see how that looks layered amongst other colours of leaves from my other drawings. You can also rip with collages. Some people like to create a ripped look. That's a personal preference that you've got to decide what you like and go with that. As you can see, layering those leaves mixed with drawings and the and the colorful ones looks quite effective and you will need to work in different sizes as you go When you're making the collage, you want to think about your composition. If your tiger's going to be around the middle, try and make him slightly off center, usually giving him more space in front of his head. It makes it more interesting and it captures the viewer's eye better. The other thing you want to think about is the way you face the leaves. So try to face the leaves so that they're almost pointing back into the picture rather than pointing out and taking the viewer's eyes out of your picture. Also, don't worry if bits stick off the end and you need to cut them. For example, I'm putting this bit right on the corner here and some of it sticks off, but that's okay. I can always recut the edges later. Uh, if things stick off, you can still stick them down when you're ready and cut the edges. Lastly, you want to try and interlayer things. So for example, this leaf here is layered underneath something colorful. So I've got something sort of black and white and colorful on top or something black and white here on top of something colourful, so I'm layering things up. If there are gaps of paper showing through, that's not a problem because you can then work back into those spaces with watercolours or oil pastels or whatever to fill up those gaps and add in texture, and that can be done at the end. I've managed to fit the tiger in and I have some leaves covering his body. And the trick really is to glue things down but not fully. You can see that I've left some of these loose at the top so that I can still layer things and have that possibility open. If I glue them down fully then I take away the possibility of weaving things and layering things further. So that's a big tip to remember.
one nice thing to do is to think about the color of the tiger which is orange and without being too obvious use some bluey greens nearby because blue and orange are complementary colors and with the tiger you kind of want to get the idea that it's well camouflaged in the forest leaves but you also kind of want to bring it out a little bit so that it's not completely disappeared in the background leaves and using little spots of blue nearby kind of complement that tiger's color the orange and brings it out more You could think about the size of the leaves you use. The leaves at the canopy of the rainforest are usually smaller because there's plenty of sunlight, whereas the leaves at the bottom are much larger. This could be something that adds interest to your picture. So once you've finished all the collaging, the final step to completing it is to use either watercolour or felt tips to colour any missing areas where you're seeing the white paper. If you're using black paper, you probably don't need to do this. Or if you did do a watercolour wash first, you also probably wouldn't need to do this. I'm not taking too much care with it. I'm just quite quickly filling in the gaps with green, some of them were filled in with green, darker green and the top I'm doing blue. I'm going to finish that later and just show you the very final step which is trimming the edges. So. Earlier in the video, I advised going over the edges and not worrying too much about them. You can see here. If I turn the piece over, you can see the bits where I've gone over. And what you need to do is simply trim them down so that they are matching the edge of the paper again. I hope you've loved this tutorial. If you did, please do like and subscribe. Your support is greatly appreciated. You might also like to check out my other tutorials or my artwork on Instagram and Facebook at Nash Henkel Art. If you've created something wonderful from this, I'd love to hear from you. So do leave a comment in the comments below. Good luck with all your future artistic endeavours and thanks again for watching.